free will, it's one of those ideas that feels almost too big to fully wrap your head around. We live in a world where choices seem to define everything, what we do, who we are, where we end up. And yet, beneath the surface of those choices lies a question that's both simple and profound. Do we actually have free will? Or is it just an illusion? To start, let's think about what we even mean by free will. At its core, it's the belief that we, as individuals, have the ability to make choices independent of external forces. You're watching this video right now because you chose to, right? Maybe you stumbled across it because of a recommendation algorithm. Maybe it piqued your curiosity because of your past interests or something someone said earlier today. Even when a decision feels entirely yours, how much of it is really shaped by circumstances beyond your control? This question isn't new. Philosophers, theologians, and scientists have been wrestling with it for centuries. In ancient Greece, figures like Aristotle argued that human beings possess a kind of rational agency, a capacity to deliberate and choose. The idea was that while external factors could influence us, we ultimately held the reins. Fast forward to today and the debate has only grown more complex, with modern science throwing some serious curveballs into the mix. One of the most famous challenges to free will comes from neuroscience. There's this experiment by Benjamin Liebet conducted in the 1980s that really shook things up. Liebet found that the brain shows activity related to a decision before the person is even aware of making it. It's like your mind already knows what you're going to do, and your conscious self is just playing catch-up. If your brain is calling the shots before you even realize it, can you truly say you're in control? But it's not just science that complicates things. Think about society itself. From the moment we're born, we're shaped by countless factors. Our upbringing, culture, education, even the people around us. If you grew up in a small town, your choices and worldview might look very different than someone raised in a bustling city halfway across the world. These factors act like invisible hands, guiding us in ways we often don't even notice. Does that mean our choices are any less real? Or is it just part of being human? At the heart of the matter is a tension between freedom and determinism. Determinism is the idea that every event, including human actions, is determined by prior causes. If you believe in determinism, the future isn't a blank slate. It's a chain reaction of events that started long before you were born. Your decisions, no matter how free they feel, are just another link in that chain. But here's the kicker. Determinism doesn't necessarily mean we're powerless. Some thinkers argue that even if everything is caused, we can still have meaningful choices within the framework of those causes. It's like playing a game with set rules. You didn't choose the rules, but you can still decide how to play. This brings us to the crux of why free will matters so much. It's not just a philosophical puzzle. It's deeply tied to how we see ourselves and others. If we believe in free will, we hold ourselves accountable for our actions. We praise people for their achievements and blame them for their mistakes. But if free will turns out to be an illusion, what happens to concepts like responsibility, guilt, or even justice? Can you really blame someone for making a bad choice if their circumstances made that choice inevitable? These questions don't just live in the abstract. They touch on real-world issues, from the justice system to mental health. For example, if someone commits a crime, we often assume they could have chosen differently. But what if their actions were shaped by factors beyond their control, like genetics or trauma? Does that make them less culpable, or does it challenge the very idea of culpability itself? And so, we arrive at the edge of a fascinating and often unsettling mystery. Free will seems essential to how we navigate life, but the more we investigate it, the more slippery it becomes. Are we truly the authors of our own stories, or are we just characters following a script we can't see? With these questions in mind, let's dig deeper into the science, philosophy, and implications of free will and see where it leads us. When you really sit with the idea of free will, or maybe the lack of it, it can start to feel a little disorienting. 
If everything we do is shaped by forces we don't control, where does that leave us? Are we just passengers in our own lives, watching as a series of predetermined events unfolds? Or is there still space for choice somewhere in the chaos? Let's break it down a bit more. At its core, free will is the idea that you can make decisions independent of external factors. You're not a puppet on strings and your actions aren't entirely dictated by genetics or the environment. But the reality is those strings are hard to cut. Think about habits. When you reach for your phone first thing in the morning, is that really a conscious decision? Or is it an automatic response shaped by years of routine, dopamine hits from notifications, and the sheer convenience of having everything at your fingertips? It feels like free will, but dig a little deeper and you might start to wonder. Science continues to complicate things. We talked about the Libet experiment earlier, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. Advances in neuroscience have shown us just how much of our behavior happens below the surface in the vast and mysterious landscape of the subconscious. For instance, studies suggest that our brains can predict our choices several seconds before we're consciously aware of making them. It's like watching a movie, but the ending's already been decided. If your brain is doing the work before you get involved, where does you even fit into the equation? And yet it's not all bleak. Some scientists argue that while our decisions may be influenced by unconscious processes, we still have the ability to override them. Think of it like driving a car. Most of the time we operate on autopilot, braking, steering, switching lanes without much thought. But if something unexpected happens, like a deer darting onto the road, we snap to attention and take control. Maybe free will works like that. Not as a constant state, but as something we tap into when it really matters. Philosophy offers some interesting perspectives here. Take compatibilism, for example. It's the idea that free will and determinism can coexist. According to this view, even if our actions are influenced by external factors, we can still be considered free as long as we're acting according to our own desires and motivations. So, if you decide to eat chocolate cake instead of salad, that choice might be shaped by your sweet tooth, your upbringing, or even a stressful day at work. But because it's your sweet tooth, your upbringing, and your stress, the decision still feels authentically yours. And then there's libertarianism, not the political philosophy, but the metaphysical one. This view holds that we do have genuine free will, that we're capable of making decisions that aren't determined by prior causes. It's an appealing idea, one that aligns with how we intuitively experience the world. But it also raises questions. If our choices aren't determined by anything, does that mean they're random? And if they're random, can we really call them free? What makes this whole debate so fascinating is that it touches on something deeply personal. Free will isn't just an abstract concept, it's tied to how we see ourselves and our place in the world. Are we active participants in our lives or are we along for the ride? And does it even matter? Some people find comfort in the idea that everything is predetermined. If you can't change the future, there's no point in worrying about it. Others find it liberating to believe in free will, to think that no matter what's happened in the past, the future is still unwritten. But maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. Maybe our lives are shaped by both forces we control and forces we don't. Think about the ocean. The waves are influenced by the wind, the moon, and countless other factors. But within those waves, a fish can still swim in whatever direction it chooses. It's not entirely free, but it's not entirely bound either. Perhaps our choices work the same way. So where does that leave us? Honestly, there's no definitive answer. Free will remains one of the great mysteries of human existence, a question that spans philosophy, science, and personal experience. But maybe that's okay. Maybe the value of this conversation isn't in finding a definitive answer, but in exploring the question itself.